Welcome to Queen Deluxe, let's do some vintage sewing. In this video, I'm going to make a 1930s bias cut gown. We're gonna do the draping process all the way through to the end result. I will be focusing on the draping process. Be sure to check out my other two videos the bias draping primer, and how to pad out your dress form. This video is part of the CocoVid celebration that's happening on YouTube. If you're interested in some of those other videos, I will link to some playlists. Also, at the end of this video, there will be a badge um, that you can collect as part of the CocoVid badge collection game. If you're interested in the badge collection game and wanna know more about it, I will put links in the description below. All right, let's get started. Yesterday about the basics of a bias draping. So we're moving on today to doing a full drape from a sketch. I have started my design lines. I hope you can see them. I'm doing them in purple ribbon so that you can see. Usually they're done in twill tape. Back. And I'll scooch it out just a bit so you can see the hip. The hip line is where all the action is. Looks like it's about here. As a big deep V on this hip. Looks like it's about there. Might change when we are starting to put fabric on, but it's like just a starting place. You know? It's the back. Oh, and it's just that in place and that's all the design line is. Alright, so we got the waist tape, the design lines, and so next is to start the draping process. We'll look again at the picture. Center front looks like to me that it's on the bias and has a little cowl. So I got my square from uh, the other day with it's got the marks of the straight grain and the cross grain and the true bias. Um, to create this cowl, all you do is we're going to put it on true bias and flip that corner down inside so that it's big enough. Creepy enough. Here. I want to be able to adjust this at the bottom here, but I want to take advantage of our cross and straight of grain lines here. Make this easier. I cannot tell from the sketch where there would be any seams, so I'm going to figure that out right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this arm die out and we'll see how that looks. So we pretty much have like the straight of grain going across here at the shoulder. It's parallel to that shoulder line in our in the dress form. Awkward I'm trying to do this. I think I'm just gonna do a side side seam. See if I will drape this and then I'll sleep on it and see how I feel. But we have like the little fold going on at the waist that is in the picture. We have a nice, I love that this is on the cross, this is on the straight.
I'm gonna add some tension here uh, to the bottom of this. We gotta remember that there will be a big heavy skirt on it, so we don't wanna pull that down a bit. Looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with the back. We're looking a little crooked here. I might be able to fix that. See how my this is my true bias line. We can see that here. So it's a little crooked. Maybe I need to shift this up better. Also might become apparent when we move to paper. So you know, I will do like a full mock-up to make sure that we're on track. So we have this deep V that's going that's sort of mirroring this V. So I want to be able to control all of this cowl that's happening in the front. I want to make sure that the back is nice and stable. So I want to put this here and make sure that's on the straight. So this, this uh, back line will not stretch at all. It's going to be nice and stable. So I can see the grain line kind of in my fabric and I will also double correct in uh, in paper. But I'm gonna go ahead and follow that green line. There, let's see if I got enough. I did. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and scooch that to here. I'm going to try putting these shoulders together. Pin this other side together. Let me get some of the side stuff out of the way. Shoulders together. Put pins in your mouth, you guys. Bad habit. Oof, I'm in the dark. Don't start doing that. I'm trying so hard to break my habit of that. Okay. Start using those clips. Now, uh, I kind of want to know where the grain is up here. There it is. So once I cut that away, you really need to pull this back up. And that will happen quite a bit. You have to readjust. You're gonna do like your first pass, see what happens. Readjust. I'm gonna have to readjust right now. Thanks. 
a little smooth over the hip. Okay, let's see how we'll Okay, can you see how I pinned that and it's swinging forward? So we wanna make sure that that's gonna be plumb straight up and down. So we're gonna adjust that. That's better. good. All right, we got this happening. Okay, throw a couple more pins in here. That looks good to me. All right, so now I'm going to attempt. I'm going to readjust. I kind of like this point coming down super super far right here. So I am going to try to blend that with the back. See how that looks. have a really great uh, reference design. It's sort of covered up by another dress. And so we do have, there's pleats that hang here. I have the piece that we used yesterday, or I draped yesterday on, so it's the quarter circle. So I'm gonna use that for the skirt. I already have it. It's cut as a quarter circle. I'm gonna see what, if it needs, if it's something that we can just add, add fullness to, if it needs more fullness, we're taking this out. I think it's a good place to start. It's already here, it's already cut. So I have pinned it sort of our wait, hip, hip line to floor, and I'm gonna do that all the way across to our point. And then there's that lovely pleated section. So I'm going to make, see if I can that going. I'm basically taking, I'm going to line it up at the floor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut that excess off. On the straight of grain here. We have one, two, three. So off camera, I cut my um, my quarter circle. I started, I pinned the, what will be the side seam together, which is the cross grain all the way down. I started pinning this in, and I really got to looking at the front, and I was like, I feel like the proportions are off, and I understand like, you know, our vintage sketch is like a, probably a 10 head, 12 head high, and it's not reality, so we're having to play with proportions. Um, and I'm pretty tall, so usually like a 10 head 
tall thing isn't like a big deal, but I ended up pinning out like an, uh, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. It seems to look better to me. You might disagree, I don't know. But I can't hear you, so it's okay. Um, so I'm gonna keep pinning this around the back here. Keeping the bottom, try to keep the bottom level with the floor like I did before. You can also see like right here on that side seam. You got kind of like a boop, boop, little, it's got a peak. We're gonna even that out here right now. Pretty happy. What I usually do if I have time is really let it sit on the form for 24 hours and then come back to it with fresh eyes and see if any of my what I thought was good proportions and everything looking nice really changes overnight and then I would take it to paper. So to get this to paper you mark everything a lot so let me show you now I'm using a sharpie your your pattern teachers would be upset if you use a sharpie I won't tell okay. I'm using a sharpie so you guys can see it mark the armhole on this side I'm gonna mark at my pins where I've pinned this together I am going to mark the waistline. You can kind of see my ribbon under here. I'm gonna mark my shoulder line. Any notches, so I would notch here. Mark underneath these pleats here. All along the skirt. So you mark like crazy, probably more than you think is necessary. Because you take this off of the form and then you're like, what is this? What happened here? I don't understand what I was thinking. Okay, like so, and then we'll take it off and apart, lay it on a piece of paper. All right, so I want to explain what is happening here. I took the original drape and put it on paper, and I lined up the cross and the straight here. But then that put this not on the true bias. And because we're doing a cowl up at the top and everything, it wasn't working out for me, and I couldn't imagine what the numbers would look like if we shifted it. So I put it back onto my grid paper, lined it up with the true bias going true diagonal, put a line here. So I've lined up my fold with the, my new line that I drew, that's the true bias. I'm outlining it in pencil and I will pull it away and show you what happens. So I think what I'm gonna do is adjust this here so that this is again on the straight of grain and we have true bias. And I will do another, I'll cut it out of a mock-up fabric and put it back on the dress form and we'll see how far off the skirt is with that adjustment. And here is what the back looks like. Right, hey guys. All right, so I have this on, my mock-up on and it's pinned. I can 
the top looks lovely in my <laughs> old sheet. All right, so I have pinned up here this. I wanna swing this over, cause like in the picture, she's got her leg like this and it just wasn't in the right spot. So I have lifted that up. So it's swinging that whole thing over. And then I put a belt on because I'm so darn short-waisted. I think I could lengthen this, which would help when we're tipping that up, this will end up lengthening, which is fine. Um, I have, that pinned so we get a little leg action, possibly, but not too much. It's kind of like if you were dancing maybe, but not just standing there, standing there you're completely covered. I think it looks pretty good. I'm very excited to move on to the, it is a little like when it's on, I feel like it's a little fuller than the sketch, um, but that fabric is a little heavier, so it might hang a little closer. To the body. The top is definitely hugging more and it looks great. So I think I'm moving on. Oh, the other Here is my fabric that I'm going to be cutting the dress out of. Isn't it beautiful? And here is it all cut out and then it has to hang for about three days. I want all the biases to hang out so that it will, the hem will not grow or the fabric will not be doing things it shouldn't be doing. Thanks for sewing with me this week. I had fun, I hope you did too. Hope you're having fun at CocoVid. If you did, click all the links and the things. Follow me on Instagram at Queen Deluxe Sew, and I'll see you around. And be sure to collect the badge. Bye.